Uh, hey guys, this is Pastor Helmer, Church of God, uh, Gilroy, California. Just say hi to you guys. And, um, thank you for watching this video. So, um, <clears throat> I was thinking about something this week. Uh, you know, um, Mark 16, 15, Jesus says, go and preach the gospel. Uh, Romans 1, 16, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is power. Right? And I look at Mark and Mark says, in the book of Mark, Jesus says, go. He doesn't say, go to church, get comfortable and stay there. He says, go, as in, get out of your seat, get out of the church and go. So we're called not to stay, not to be comfortable, but to go. This week we had, um, last week we had an event at a at a local high school here. Uh, my, my youth group, the leaders were very excited. They were very pumped about doing this event and they were praying and they were hoping that um you know that a lot of kids showed up that a lot of you showed up and i was too i really you know we thought and we know that god opened these doors that we were able to go to the high school and we were able to to uh, invite kids and we gave them free pizza and they gave them water and they were so excited and they were they were preparing to, to just bring this mass of kids and that's what they anticipated to be able to to have fun with them, to take them away from the, these these pagan practices of Halloween and just celebrate life and celebrate God and you know we're to a new life and the event was even called Dead to Life and we celebrate a new life in Christ. And the intention was a good intention. They 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 had a a good desire to to bring kids to Christ. And I remember Rob saying, you know, we're gonna bring them and we're gonna we're gonna baptize them on the spot. And it was it was just so happy and to to just want to have this mass of people come so that we can preach to them. And it was biblical. They were going. They were they were acting. They were doing. And then not a lot of people. Let me rephrase it. Nobody came. It was just our kids. It was just our youth. It was a couple of more um, people who were invited. And in that group, there was one gentleman who came. Um, he was at our event. Young guy. Uh, and and we, we talked to him. I've talked to him before. He's come to church. He's... He's not a regular. And this week, um, unfortunately, um, he passed away. Um, I don't want to get into the details, but it's it, it brought me to an idea. <sighs> Maybe the event that we had was not for the masses. Maybe the event that we had was specifically for him. There's a saying that says sometimes you miss the forest because of the trees. Maybe we were too focused on converting the masses when we haven't really focused on really converting who we have. We're so focused, right? And it's not a bad thing to go and to preach and to want to make our churches bigger and to want the masses to come in and, and have them come so that we can really preach to them but the reality is have we really convinced converted preached to the ones who are actually here is your youth group is my youth group is is it solid am i too focused on bringing other people in and i'm not completely done with focusing on the ones i have in my hand now and I thought about it this week as this young, just young gentleman, couldn't have been more than 23, 24. We had the opportunity. We, we had the, the chance to, to, to focus on him, to, to preach to him. Did we do something wrong? Did our focus, was our focus misplaced? 
I, I don't know. Did we lose an opportunity? And it's not completely on us. I understand that the, the, the individuals always have a responsibility. But as I think about it, as, as I'm trying as a pastor to bring new souls in, I, I come back to the realization that I need to convert the ones that I have first. Or at least do everything I possibly can or we possibly can to preach to the ones that we have and make them or have place it on them to make a decision. Have we done everything we physically, spiritually can to preach to the ones we have so there's never an excuse? Have we all as individuals in the church when someone walks into our door, do every single member, does everyone give it a shot, give it a try and say hi and talk and, and preach them. Preach to them. Or is it always the same people? Two, maybe three, who actually care enough to hold a conversation and to preach to someone, to show them love, even when they come into our churches. But, but what if, what if someone came into my church, someone came into your church, and you all tried? Every single person in that church walked to, and tried to talk to that person and showed them love and hugged on them and loved on them. What, what would that do? Because on the day of judgment, there will be no excuse and we will be not held accountable for at least planting a seed or trying. Someone said once, he says, if you were completely convinced of what hell actually is, you make a bigger effort to preach the reality of it. Maybe that's the problem. We're not truly convinced that there is a hell and that people will suffer and maybe we'll have some some blame but as we accept the reality of hell we also accept the reality of heaven And for some reason, that's just a lot easier to believe. But if you accept the reality of heaven, we must convince ourselves that there's a reality of hell. And every person who walks through our doors in our churches, every event that we hold, every person that God brings is a possible candidate for hell or for heaven. And we can have blame and we can be held accountable one day in judgment whether I participated and whether you participated in someone's desire to not follow Christ and accept his eternal destination or we can place and have blame or be held accountable because we did what we had to do and walk somebody down the path of righteousness to accept Christ and live eternally in heaven. Do not lose an opportunity to preach the gospel. I know we want to fill our churches. I know we want these masses to come but let's start with the ones we have. Let's convince them first. And then we'll go to the masses. Thank you for your time.